a couple about a couple of weeks ago, guys, I did the wolf run at uh, the spring wolf run. You tell. Um, so it was ten kilometers. It was like a cross country obstacle course. It was um, in Leamington Spa in in a uh, Warwickshire in England for people who are don't live in England. Um, and uh, yeah, it was really good fun. I did it with about. It was 11, 10, 11 other people. I can't remember how many of us there was now, but it was a, a big group of us, and it was it was really good fun. It was tiring. I I felt absolutely whack for like two days after, but it was absolutely fantastic. I had like um, pools of mud that you had to go through. You had to swim on like along a river. Had like massive obstacles, like walls and uh, like monkey bars and other things like that that you had to do as you went around it. But no, it was really good fun. How long did it take you to clear the course? Uh, I think roughly around two hours. I don't know, un- over yeah. or under two hours. I, but roughly around two hours. Yeah, no wonder you were dead after like two hours of like off-road obstacle course, going through mud, water, climbing shit. Is it a yearly event or is it like quarterly? What is it? Yeah, it's quarterly. So one each season. Like the next one, the winter one sucks. Mm. So I know the next one is actually Leicester one is in Leicester. Um, that is the first weekend of June. So, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I know a few of my friends are doing it, so I said if I'm not um, busy, I might do it. But I'm hoping to be away, so we'll see what happens. But I will be doing it again at some point. Do you have to pay to do it, or is it just like you just turn up and do it? No, you have to pay. It's not It's not free. <laughs> I was going to say. I can't remember how much it was, but if you had like a big group of you, uh, like the fifth person co- goes free. Okay. So, because we had two group, uh, two groups, and a, uh, a little bit extra, uh, at least two people were free. Mm, sweet. I'd say for added incentive, like if you really want to push yourself. It should be free, but they make you pay if you fail the course. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Victory Achieve Podcast, a video game podcast. I'm Dan, and I'm with Brandon and Chris. Hello. Hello. So, boys, let's get right stuck into it this week. Why not? Why not? Brandon, you beat yeah? you beat her, didn't you? Fucking hell. Right. So, as everyone knows, we are all massive fans of Elden Ring. And oh. yesterday, I finally, 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 at nearly midnight... 12 hours of swearing at her, calling her a bitch, calling her a cunt, calling her all sorts of different foul language. I finally beat Millennia. You were like, let me solo her. It's it's, it's funny because it was in a group chat. I was talking to you guys. I was like, oh, Millennia, she seems like an all right boss. You know, there's nothing special in her first phase. You know, she's very aggressive, but no, no, nothing special. Then I was like, you know what would really make this boss fight really cool is that as you get her HP lower, you know, some cool things happen. You know, like um, Sister Freed and Ariane Dale from, you know, Dark Souls 3 DLC, except, you know, that's when you deplete all their HP. And then <laughs> a few moments later, I just go to the group chat and go like, fuck me, she's got a phase two. <laughs> and then I was just putting in loads of, m- loads of memes and gifs of just like, oh, yeah, this is nice. Oh, no. I just wasn't expecting because it it's because I've I've got fourteen uh, cerulean tear flasks. Is that the right one? No, crimson. Because it's, it's pointless to say I'm a cerulean. Cr- crimson is the yeah. Health. So I've got fourteen of them at plus eleven, and I think it took me 
at least nine hours of attempting just to find out she's got a second phase. Okay. Because I never reached it. I've, I just absolutely battered it. I've, you know, I tried, tried, you know, summons. I tried mimicked it. I tried trying to find out her attack patterns. I just could not fucking do it. And then all of a sudden, I beat this first phase. I was like, oh, fake fuck. And then cutscene happens, and I'm just like, oh, fuck me. And then I just got absolutely obliterated. It's just one of these fights where just the normal, the first stage alone is brutal. And then you come to the second phase, which is obviously equally as brutal, but with the actual penalty of Scarlet Rot. And I was just like, oh, fuck's sake. And I still, honestly, Chris, I don't know how you found Commander Nile easier than Millennia. Or more difficult than Millennia. Millennia is just, you know, on another level. I, I just did. Like, the first playthrough, I did a... I did, I'm not going to say it didn't take me a few attempts, but I think I beat her on, like, my fifth or sixth attempt. Whereas Fuck Commander off. Neil... Commander Neil literally took me, like, 30 attempts. I just... I don't know. I just struggled with him so much. I think I easily had over 100 attempts against Millennia. I couldn't... It was... It's her... You know her big AoE... That, that um, water flow attack... It yeah, took me it's, so it long. <laughs> it took me so long to figure out the dodge pattern for that. Yeah. And I think I, the one, I think after that, the one that then caught me off guard is once I managed to sort of figure out, okay, how to dodge that. I just couldn't figure out. You know the one where she does the like the three small swipes and then a second swipe. Hmm. Once I nailed that, that is when I could start to find Millennia a bit easier. Once you've nailed those two attacks, the first phase isn't that bad. Yeah. Also, when you come to the second phase, you just got to remember that her Scarlet Rot, for some reason, does more damage than normal Scarlet Rot. Well, she but... is the Queen of Rot. Still, she's a bitch. <laughs> All right, have you used... Well, oh, you go uh, first, Chris. Yeah, or well, well, two things. Uh, firstly, uh, I, I found out a little tip to help with a fight. It's a bit late now, but um, apparently if you throw a frozen pot at her when oh, she's yeah. like jumps up in the air, you can completely cancel her big attack. Like I did notice you because I a few times when she jumped into the air I could sort of stagger her so she didn't finish the thing. But yeah. you know, I think most of the times the reason why I sort of killed myself is because I just dodged at the wrong time. Mm. You know when she does that sort of semi jump in the air to do that lunge attack? For some yeah. reason I just instinct, whenever I see her jump in the air, I'm like shit, here come, here it comes. So I do I so I dodge, but then obviously she just comes and thrusts and that's it, half my HP gone. Is this in the yeah, second well, phase? No, this is the first the phase. phase. Okay. I think the first phase is harder than the second one. The second one's still hard, but I have more trouble with the first half than I did the second. Uh, to be fair, I did cheese it a little bit. So the first stage I did, you know, normally. Then the second phase I brought out Mimic Tier just to sort of uh, give aggro. Oh, oh, I'm not impressed now. I thought you did it at soul level one using bare fists and those spells, <laughs> you know, like the, the way... That, the developers intended. <laughs> All of, uh, no, the, just the more... You, you've cheated not only the game, but you yourself. <laughs> I had no choice. She, she was literally holding me back from actually playing other things. Because I'm the sort of person where if I'm stuck at a point in any Souls game, I'm not even going to go do another thing in the Souls game until I beat her, in, until I beat that bit. I'm not. But it just... Can you, <sighs> can you imagine what I'd be like if... Her boss fight was completely mandatory. If it was <laughs> mandatory, I don't think a lot. Of, I don't think. I think like one percent of the player base would finish the game. Mm. Yeah, I she think is load of not easy whatsoever. No, I, I was trying to. Have you? You well? Have either you seen the democracy video on the Elden Ring bosses? And it does focus a lot on Melena. What do you mean? Well. Democracy released a video the other week about the Elden Ring bosses and the problem with Elden Ring and the bosses. Um, do you want to know how many unique bosses are there are in Elden Ring? I wouldn't say. I think it's less than 50. Oh, it's five times less than 50. It's nine, well, Brandon. How is there nine unique bosses? Because... Every other boss, there's another version of it. Oh yeah, granted, like I see, there's two versions of Marguerite. Yeah, exactly. There's so many versions of the um, catacomb cat. Yeah. There's um, yes, there's Godfrey who you face twice. Literally, there's only nine unique unique bosses, and 
also Melina, there's obviously with a lot of Souls bosses, they will always have a pattern. Melina has a str- there's, I think it's in phase two. There's a moment where her pattern changes, and it's you can you you won't know until that moment, and you so you it will do set attack and then it will do something else, but it will do a feint, so you don't know which way it's going to go. So you might roll, and then it might just attack you. Or you might well, she's roll. like in the first phase. That's why I found it so hard. Because like sometimes she'll do like a combination attack, but then I can't tell if she's going to fall off and do more combination attack, or is she going to finish? Yeah, that's the one of the problems with Melina, and why she she's is very unpredictable. Harder than, she yeah, even harder is sometimes you can't even tell what she's going to do. Yeah, I completely agree. Like there's so many times where I, you know, I dodge thinking you know. That's her attack stream done. But then she keeps following up. I'm like, fuck off. Yeah. I'm like so far behind on Elden Ring. I've not even got into the capital city yet. Uh, I've not even got to, not even started the Volcano Manor. Okay, I've got, right. The reason why it took me so long to do the Volcano Manor is because, you know, when you talk to... You know, the one who almost looks like Queen Victoria. I've not even spoken to her. I've yeah, like re- I didn't realize that you had to speak to her to advance it because when you speak to her, it was she was like, "Oh, let's team up to destroy the fingers." I was like, "No, no, no! I want to protect the fingers. Like, you know, they're looking after me." So I didn't realize, you know, it was at that point the juncture is you are now aiming to destroy the fingers. Mm. So I was like, "How am I meant to advance the story then if I have to do this?" Like, I thought I was, you know, if there was multiple endings, I thought, "Can I not keep the fingers?" Mm. Unless there's like another way to advance Volcano Manor, like I really don't know. There is. Um, in one of the side rooms you go into, uh, there is an illusory wall you can go through. Yeah, a, I got. I got yeah, but I needed one. the I needed the key to get in there, and she had the fucking key. So yeah, how do I get a, in there? Well, that, you can still get the key so long as you just don't go out doing the murders. Then. Yeah. So how do you get the key then? So the only way, so obviously you get the key from agreeing to destroy the fingers. Mm. So what's the other way? Well, no, you just get the key from there, but just don't progress the storyline. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did that. Yeah, but I thought, you know, talking to her would set that wheel of wheel in no. motion, if you know what I mean. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I was going to say. Only, cause only, I... only, if you, only if you follow through with the summons. So that, that was my problem, which I had with the Volcano Man, because I thought, like, I was purposely sort of not advancing the story because I thought, hang on a minute, is this now advancing the quest line, which is going to change things? Actually, don't you... Pro- can't you just get into the manor if you get captured by one of the uh, Iron Maiden? Yeah, I, that way, then. I, yeah, you can do that, but it never happened to me. I just got there by talking to um, I think one of her I think servants. That's another way you, oh, that's another way you can bypass. Yeah, I, sp- I spoke to the servant, and that's how I ended up there first. I climbed up. That was mm, fun. So did I. Yeah, I didn't know you could get captured first because I stayed far away from those things. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I've, it's just got to the point where there's it's so many spoilers for Elden Ring now. I'm like, I don't give a fuck now. I I don't care. <laughs> I don't know the story, like that, and like how it all ends or whatnot. But like bosses and all that, I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Oh, I've seen, I've seen like loads of shit. I've seen the Malena fight. I don't give a fuck. Well, the ending to Elden Ring is they all go home and have Lena. <gasps> <laughs> no. Anyway, anyway, we've been focusing on Elden Ring a lot, <laughs> and we've got a lot to go through this time. Mm. Well, you know, so, I, I wanted Brandon to just say that he'd uh, soloed her. I did solo her. It took me a few attempts. Yeah. Well, I guess we're still on the games. You've you've played a few games, haven't you, Chris? I have. Yes, I've. Uh... Put a lot of time into two in particular, which I'd quickly like to discuss. So, uh, have you guys heard of a game called Nobody Saves the World? No, Not until I haven't. you mentioned it. Okay. So, this is a game developed by Drinkbox, who is the same studio who did the Guacamole games. Who oh, played those? Oh. And uh, I, I rather like those games, like Metroidvania, for all those things. Very mm. good. Uh, and this game has got. Um, you can kind of tell it's by them because like, it's got their sort of like signature humor, like the 
characters you talk to, like, is like sort of a. Uh, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's got the same tone to it, really. Um, but uh, this game is very different. It is essentially an RPG, but it's like a sort of mashup between uh, sort of like Legend of Zelda, because you have like a sort of overworld, you look around, and as you defeat enemies and do side quests, and that, uh, you start off as like a sort of... Uh, what what essentially looks like a bold baby, <laughs> mm. and um, but as you progress with the game, you unlock new forms. Like you can shape shift, and by doing this, you uh, you unlock new abilities. But it doesn't just stop there. For every ability, for every form that you have, each one has their own quest. Uh, it's and it ranges from all kinds of things. So like kill X number of baddies using this skill, uh, combine certain skills to like level up. And as they level up, they also learn even more skills. And as you progress further, you can start to uh, swap the skills from one form from another, like completely customize them all. So, say if you if you're using one form, you can have skills from like three other forms to just like find your niche, which you will do a lot just to do the quest. Um, but combat, it's let's say it's top down like Zelda, but there's so many different skills you can use from ranged attacks to like reflective shields, that kind of thing. But the game does kind of turn into not quite a bullet hell, but there's a shit ton of enemies on the screen. Probably mm. to its detriment at some points, because um, sometimes during certain skirmishes, like the camera pans out a little bit, and sometimes it's really hard to tell where the hell you are, because there's so much happening on the screen. So mm. it's, it's just a complete clusterfuck. But it's also two-player as well, if you want to like do cooperative. And there appears to be a plane going over my house, which is very loud. <laughs> I'm, I've been uh, looking at the, uh, I'm looking at screenshots for it, and it looks, it's got a weird, weird like creepy horror vibe in some of its, uh, how it looks like the the eyes of the characters are very uh, soulless or very abyssal or. I think that's kind of the idea because yeah. you are you don't have like a sort of set form as such. Um, mm. There is more as the story progresses, but I don't want to put on anything. But um, yeah, it is a lot of fun though. Uh, I put quite a lot of time into it because I thought, oh, I think I didn't think this game would be that long because I didn't know what the hell to expect. I just downloaded it on a whim. But um, because you have to like essentially grind so much for like every character or every skills, and then you've got dungeons as well. Uh, and you've got enemies that are only like weak to certain attacks. If you hit them like with like the wrong skill, it does like no damage. So you're like forced to swap and do that. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot to there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do in it. And um, yeah, uh, I think I've put about twenty hours into it so far. And I don't know how far I am for the game. I don't feel like I've got that far. I feel, feel like I've spent far too much time farting around like Leather Eagle because hmm. everyone as much as possible but I don't know, maybe I might surprise myself I'll just like, go into my next dungeon and say like, oh you beat the game okay. but yeah, um, if you if you do like Zelda and like uh, kind of like bullet hell, just, if you like exploring that kind of thing then I, I highly suggest giving it a go if you like this like mindless grinding just like switching your brain off and like killing tons of enemies then yeah, it's for you do recommend it. Mm. That, you say that's on Steam? Uh, I might be. I got it on Game Pass. And oh, stuff. okay. So. I was, it, you pro- it probably is on Steam then, as well as Xbox. Then. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And now, uh, you, also, you also played Yakuza Like a Dragon or Yakuza 7. Yes. Uh, well, it's only Yakuza 7, but it seems like too different to like be a numbered sequel. It's, yeah, know, it's it, it's not officially called Yakuza Seven. It's called Yakuza Like a Dragon. No, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it's the RPG one. Yes, which is why I thought I'd give it a go. So my history of the Yakuza games. Uh, so I've got one and two on the PS2, uh, and I did finish them all those years ago. But I never really stuck with the series after that. From what uh, I think Yakuza Zero is the one that everyone loves, and they say it's the best one. 
No, I haven't played that one. Mm. But anyway, well, I, I looked at Game Pass again. I, I well get like ninety nine percent of my games nowadays. But um, and I've just seen like the whole Yakuza series there, and it's like oh, I don't know if I can be asked to like play through all of them because there's like well seven of them. But I thought I'd try like a dragon because it is meant to be more of a sort of side one, like its own self-contained plot. And then it's got like an RPG style combat system, like turn based. And yeah, I pull it on and I could not stop playing it. Hmm. I was at some stupid hours in the morning playing. Uh, so if you'd like, I don't know, I don't know if, if you like like the traditional RPGs, like the traditional Final Fantasy ones, like the turn based battles, like um, going around towns, like uh, doing side quests. And, Oh man, there's there's so much in it. There's, there's a shit ton of mini games, and each one is like fully fleshed out. There's one that is essentially just Mario Kart, and it's like full on. It's got items, it's got like cups and everything. <laughs> it's got a proper Grand Prix mode. It's, there's one. That, there's another game that's essentially Pac-Man, but like really fleshed out as well. Uh, and the story is really good as well. I was pretty invested in what was going on. I would say probably as a downside, being the type of game it is, there's a lot of cutscenes, and I mean a lot of cutscenes, which is why I'm I thought about streaming it originally, but there's just so much. It's like you have a cutscene and then you think, oh god, that's finally finished, and then start another one. Ah, like, oh, bloody hell! <laughs> so, spend a lot of time watching it <laughs> before mm. I'm playing, but I think by the time I finish, I'll put about sixty hours into it. Mm. Um. By the time I finish the end credits, but that's not doing everything. God help you if you want to get like a hundred percent completion in this. Well, <laughs> You'll you... have to do like every every like mini game, every side quest. Yeah. There's essentially like a Pokemon system thing as well, where you mm. have to like find every single enemy type. My God, there's so much. <laughs> like the Yakuza games have like so much stuff with their mini games and all that. Uh, mm. I think it's even got. It's just got ridiculous in the later games not kind of not in a bad way it's just what you can do is just like whoa like it's like so much uh i i, I do want to play yakuza series and i think if i do i'll just start with yakuza zero uh because mm. that just sounds like the perfect game to start the series uh off at i think i think the thing with Yakuza, what um, it's kind of been funny with recent years, as it's slowly become, in a way, the flagship Sega <laughs> franchise, in a really yeah. weird way, o- kind of over Sonic to a certain degree. I know it's got this huge fan base. Yeah, I, I, maybe over Sonic is a bit, maybe, maybe saying it a bit too much, but I think. There's, there. I don't think there's a massive difference in sales. I think, with how Sonic's been with the 3D games, I think Yakuza is quickly ca- caught is probably caught up with Sonic in terms of sales. Maybe, maybe I'm talking out my ass. I don't know, but I have a feeling that may have happened. Well, for my it's for my knowledge, none of them have been received badly. They've all scored pretty high. Yeah, from what I understand. So I think they're like pretty consistent. Like I, I think for the most part, apart from this one, which is like plays more like a traditional RPG, um, like tonally and gameplay wise, they're pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, they haven't deviated much. Uh, no. it's, like, it's, like, it's only been like this one. I forgot to mention as well. Uh, in this game, you've, you've also like Final Fantasy, like the original. Like you've got a job system as well. Oh. So not only are you leveling up, you can like change skills and then like start from level one. So. Yeah. You can do so much grinding if you want. Mm. It's like it's like materials you do to craft. It's like there's so much, but I, I just kept doing it. <laughs> I just kept playing it because <laughs> because I always felt because the kind of game it is, and there's so much. Like you always feel you're about to finish something. So like, oh well, I, if I'm in this area, I can just do this now, and then I do that, and then oh, oh, but I'm so close to doing this other thing as well. This other side quest, I'll do that too. Like, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> you got like social links with your with your party members as well, so you you're like forced to go back to your sort of hub every now and again and have a little chimwag and do a 
do a little side job for them as well to uh, make them better in combat. Not liking her uh, persona. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so. Mm. But there's so much, but all the characters are good. It's, the plot's good. There's a couple of characters that I know are from like the mainline games, but I'm not 100% who they are. But they're more like cameos or like just the odd boss fight than anything. They don't play like an integral role in the story as such. Mm. But, but tonally, it's, it's kind of all over the place because it's like the main storyline is like super serious. And can get quite dark, but then the side quests like uh, they're really like tongue in cheek and pretty dumb. Like you'll you'll go from like seeing like one of your bosses like hung himself in a in an office and everyone's really distressed and going to his funeral. Then the next thing you know, you're fighting a chimpanzee who's piloting a crane. Yeah, because of course you are. Of course you are. And then you giant and you're fighting a giant rumble in the streets. So, uh, that's yeah. just like how like the main uh, Yakuza games are like. As I know, there's like you have the like the big boss battles in the like the where you, uh, in like the older games where you know your shirts off, you're showing your massive uh, yakuza tattoos on your back, and you having these m- massive one on one one on one fights with a uh, muscly men, and then you go yeah you kind of do that too yeah. yeah, and then you'd be like, oh, I'm just gonna do a side mission, and you walk into a, a bar. And it reveals it's a nursery full of adults in diapers, and it's like, wait, oh, what? that that quest is in this one as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. and you can you can use them as summons. <laughs> <laughs> like how summons work in this game is like you literally like call someone on your mobile and they're coming at you. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, it's um, it's I really really highly recommend it. And if you've never played the series before, then maybe I'd say maybe start with this one if if you like. If you like your more traditional RPGs, right? Because really, it is that good. You just gotta, in your mind, you just gotta change like the sort of fantasy, like sword and sorcery setting, for this modern day Japan, mm-hmm. and you're good to go, really. Well, there's there's a game that uh, Chris re- recommends. Yeah, too. Mm. And I've got, I'm just gonna give it a cup of tea, so it's going great. <laughs> Well, come on, Brandon. You've been a, you've been a uh, bit, bit quiet, so you've got a few things I know you you're itching to talk about. So uh, speak up. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> short. So after we recorded um, l- uh, the last episode, I, I went off to the cinema to watch a film called Northman. The Northman. You, don't you mean Villain Saga? The film. I oh, don't compare it to Villain Saga because Villain Saga is way better. Please. Can we can we can we keep them separate? But yeah, I was I was not overly pleased with the Northman. I mean, the trailer itself looked decent. The actual you know location setting and everything was pretty cool. But it's just it's just too off for me. Like the actual, I don't know. It just didn't it just didn't feel right. Like the voice act, like the act, well not voice acting. The acting was cheesy sometimes at best for when they're trying to act mysterious. You go to a village and then randomly the king is there, just in this one random village in the middle of nowhere. Like you think they're a fucking king of like Iceland. Why are they just decide to camp by a hill just for the plot convenience of this guy trying to get revenge? Well, he's not. He wasn't the king. Well, you know what I mean. But he overthrew his father. But they and they, they explained in the film that he'd lost. He that he lost the title. But just the overly convenience of just there being at that exact at that. It just did not seem right for me. I thought, you know, he's power hungry at the best of times. Like, why choose there of all places to almost become like a pacifist? Almost a pacifist, you know what I mean? But and then the ending was just weird. Like, yes, he's, you know, now going to be a, a father, but... Did, did you not like the naked that... fight at the end? <laughs> well, I thought the naked fight at the end was cool. But but why did they have to get naked? Like the, the Vikings, they were like, ah! ah, I will not be held back by modern cotton. <laughs> let's like, let's, it, let's have our battle in a volcano while naked. Oh, like, oh, see on, what? This, this sounds like a Yakuza side quest. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I mean? It just it just did not s- sit right with me. Like a lot of other medieval films, a lot of other Viking or any sort of films along that genre line. 
just seem to have more of a concrete story and a more concrete setting, um, dynamics and everything. But it just seemed so off and cheesy to me. Would I, rec- would I watch it again? No. Would I rec- recommend people to watch it? Well, go ahead. I can't really stop you, but... <clears throat> Yeah, I I really wasn't. And then like reading the reviews afterwards and, you know, and it actually having decent ratings, I'm just like, fuck off, has it? Well, like, I, yeah. I see it as well. Um, I, I, I know you're like, oh, don't compare it to Villain Saga, but it's actually very similar to Villain Saga. Yeah, it, it, story-wise it is. Yeah, because it, it's all about revenge. Yeah. Um, and effect, I think where it differs from Vinland Saga is I kind of got halfway through and I was like, you know what? We're just following the antagonist or the, the actual, the protagonist is actually the villain. Maybe, perhaps. It, it's, I guess it's all perspective, really. Yeah, I, I was thinking like, because it seemed like the, vil- the villain, we'll call him, mellowed out, but he's just so hell-bent on revenge. Like, you know, I actually felt sorry for the villain at the time. <laughs> but I thought, I will say though, I think one of the coolest scenes from that movie is when, you know, at night time and he's just steadily working up the murders and oh, yeah. making him paranoid. I thought that was really, really cool. That was probably my favourite part of the film. Mm. Like, I I, I I, can see where you kind of come from. And I'm like, I, I would say I liked it a, a bit more... Uh, than you, I didn't. I I think I, I, went, I went with my friends and they they loved it. They were like, "Oh, this is the modern gladiator." Personally, no. I don't agree, but I also don't think it's a bad film. I I did enjoy watching it. I, funny enough, um, what the I the cinema I went to, I, we went to the Phoenix in Leicester, and it's, that's quite a small cinema, and all the funny moments. Uh, it was just me and my mates just chuckling, and then it just had everyone else just dead silent, and it was so funny. So like, there's a, a fight with, um, where the main character he fights a undead um, Viking, uh, where it's it's, ba- it's effectively all in his mind. This fight. I was gonna say, do you know what that reminded me of? You know, like the Drago from Skyrim. That's yeah. literally what it reminded yeah. me of. But like at the end of it, when he defeats that undead, he gets the head and uh, rams it up his uh, bottom, and me and my mates just were like, ha, 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 ha. and then everyone else in the cinema was just silent. It was, it was just. <laughs> I was like, we're just the five grown adults just laughing over this, uh, and there were just so many other little bits like that, um, and so, so like I didn't like leave. Being like, I didn't enjoy this. No, I did, but when I when I think of anything, it's like I wouldn't compare it to Gladiator. I'd compare it to Villain Saga, and Villain Saga did the revenge plot so well. Uh, I'm not saying like this didn't, but I think when he like goes, you know what I do, like I think the way he decided to take his revenge did feel it slightly off. Whereas what I love about Vinland Saga is uh, Thorofin wanted his revenge and it just gets taken away from him. And it's um, it's amazing the fact that he can never get his revenge and it's just written amazing. And it, I don't know, the way it went in The Northman, I was a bit... I, I, I was like, uh, I, I don't know how I feel about it, but then the end battle was cool. But... I, it, it looked so good, the Northman. Um, the music was really cool. Uh, I, I, I thought most of the acting was pretty damn decent. I think some of it was a bit off, but most of it was good. Um, like the, the, the way they just get down and start acting like the wolves and howling, and as part of their rituals, and then the fact that he. His mum tried to snog him and tried to sleep with him. I was like, that was, that's disgusting. Well, well, really, with I, yeah, that moment was a bit like what incest. But then, I, I, when you look at it, she wanted just to kill him, so she was just trying to seduce him just to kill him. So yes, it was it 
disgusting. It was just a way of just trying to kill him. That was that was all it was. Um, but I, I I did like Northman, but if you wanted a really good something, if you wanted to watch something like that, just watch Finland Saga. It's better. <clears throat> yeah, I think a lot of things are better than Northman. Like honestly. Even, like it's one of my favorite films of all time, but I think The Rock, The Scorpion King, is just a lot better. Like, and that's a comparison, <laughs> right? Um, it, it it is. It's basically the same thing. Like he's trying to get revenge because well, well, his family was basically murdered. Trying to get revenge, he does get it. It's a bit more funny. It's the acting's not as cheesy. It's and it, the film's like nearly both much older than The Northman. Yeah, but I'd, I'd much rather watch The Rock, The Scorpion King than I did The Northman. I'd much rather watch, you know, 300 BC. There's so many other films which I would choose to watch over The Northman if I wanted a story about revenge or anything mm. like that. But yeah, it, it just didn't sit right with me personally. Mm. Well, I uh, I did watch a a Netflix show uh, that came out a couple. Maybe last month, whenever it came out, uh, it was the second season of Russian Doll. Um, do either of you know of Russian Doll? I just know they live inside of each other. Okay, <laughs> that is what a Russian Doll is. Yeah, <laughs> but I meant TV show. Uh, do is they it, is also it, live inside each other? Uh, no. Isn't Russian Doll written by Joss Whedon? Or I think. It's- no, you're thinking. I'm thinking uh, of doll. I'm thinking of Dollhouse. Yeah, you're thinking of Doll's House. Yeah. Um. So Russian Doll season. Russian Doll. Uh, like season one was about these, um, two people. Uh, who, they were basically living like a certain period of their life again and again, like Groundhog Day, but it would always end in their death, and uh, they that all they all fix it. Uh, season one is fantastic. So. I, I, if you've not seen season one of Russian Doll, it's hilarious. It's really easy to watch. I absolutely binged it so quickly when it first when it came out. I was meant to be doing college work, and I was like, I'll just watch. I'll have a break from my college work, and I'll just put Russian Doll on. Yeah, uh, three episodes later, I was like, I'm meant to be doing college work, not w- watching Russian Doll. Uh, it. I was hooked so much on the first season. First season's fantastic. But when I got to the end, I was like, that's a really good season, nicely tied up. I don't need anything more. And then they announced season two, and I was like, I didn't really want a season two. I was a bit, I was very skeptical. And to a point, my thoughts were right over season two. I didn't. It felt unnecessary. Um, I still enjoyed it, and I, I binged it so quick. But it 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 just it just felt so unnecessary. And so the gimmick of the second season was the main character. She uh, basically goes into the past lives of her female ancestors. And I, I don't know, it was just kind of like accepting death and change and I, I, it made sense, but I just, I, I, it just didn't really do it like the first season and the other main character, his whole plot line was absolutely pointless. There was no, he didn't even need to be in, he, like he had no purpose to season two and it was just kind of disappointing. Like uh, the main uh actress she's so funny as the main character i can't remember her name um but she she's written a, a russian doll um and like season one was just so good and i i was I, I wasn't sure about season two and i i was kind of right but at the same time it, it is still watchable but i've i've you know if if you're gonna watch it just watch season one <laughs> just ignore season two. Season one is now, just correct, so good. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the first series of Russian Doll quite a few years old? Yeah, it came mm. out in 2018, I think. 2018, 2019. Mm. 
it's all right. It feels like it's it seems longer than that. I've never watched it, but I've seen it on that obviously on the streaming services. But I've I've seen it like pop up like trending like series two, and it's like isn't there quite a gap between series one and two. Yeah, it, yeah. It seems to be like oh, it's a series that's been cancelled and then just out of the blue, it's like ah, fuck it, we're doing. No, 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 they announced season two a while back. I bet it got delayed because of COVID, like many things did. Um, Fair enough. But I I would have loved to have said that season two was much better than it was, but it just wasn't. And it's it's like I, I thought I didn't really want a season two and... I didn't think it was necessary, and sadly, I was right. I wish I was wrong, but for me personally, I I was right. Season two just wasn't worth it. I I feel strongly now, like with pretty much any series I watch, if at the time there's only like one series of it, that if it's done well and they haven't, like there's no real loose ends, it's just like just let it have one season. Just have one season that's really good. It's how I felt Carbon. over yeah. Alter Carbon. I finished the first season of on Carbon, and I was like, "Cool, I don't. I think that's perfect. I don't want anything more." And then he announced season two, and I've not even watched season two because I was yeah. like, "I don't feel I then needed to be a second season." And from what I've no, heard, because it, it's two. like a murder of mystery thing when they solved it. Turn. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I didn't even think, from what I've heard, season two is not very good. So I'm like, well, to me, it ended at season one. Like, season two doesn't exist for me. I'm not going to waste my time watching it. Mm. See, I watched the first series of Alton Carbon uh, pretty much uh, when lockdown first happened. Because I know nothing about the show, but I did see that Anthony McKenzie was in it. Um, mm. You know, War Machine, the yeah. Marvel film. Uh, no, not War Machine. Uh, no. Falcon. Falcon. Um, yeah, I, I thought who was in it. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll watch that with the folks because if he's got any minute. I didn't realise he's not in the first series like at all. He's, no. he's only in it in series two. Yeah. Uh, and oddly enough, I same as you. I haven't watched series two because I've heard it's not very good. And to be honest, I thought the first series was okay, but nothing spectacular. So I, I wasn't really feeling watching the second series anyway. Hmm. Uh, Oh well. There's a short review of the Carbon. Yeah. Well, um, I also on Netflix, I because it's now the final season, I decided to actually get up to date because I was two seasons behind on Better Call Saul. So I'm now fantastic series. Absolutely amazing. It is. Uh so I'm now fully up to date with Better Call Saul. I absolutely binged Season four and five, uh, I I I was spoiled the start of season four. I remember um, telling my mate, I was like, "This happens." He was like, mm. "And it's literally the first episode, so it was like, not even five minutes into the episode, you get it, get it, you find out about it." So it was like, well, <laughs> I think by the end of season three, it was kind of obvious that was what was going to happen, uh, but. No, I really enjoyed season four and five. Um, I see it goes a lot more into uh, the cartel stuff in those in the later seasons. Yeah, surprisingly, I've, of the people I've spoken to personally, uh, a lot of them have seen Breaking Bad, but they mm. haven't seen Better Call Saul. Mm. Or the, some that have watched it haven't given it all that much time. Because I do feel it's more of a slow burn. It's more dialogue heavy than Breaking Bad is. There's there's far less action. It's picked up a little bit more, like yeah. action-wise. But it is more about the um the altercations between each character. Yeah. But they're so, so well written. And this you can feel the tension like every scene. Oh, when yeah. Kim goes when Kim goes off on one, I feel like I've been told off. <laughs> it's that like, good. It's like fuck like, it up. <laughs> like I think Kim is the, the the character I'm always I'm very confused about uh, with how in terms of the ending of Better Call Saul because I feel like there's either two options for a character and I'm wondering how that that's gonna how her character arc uh, is gonna play out 
Uh, so I that's... don't think it's going to end well. I don't well. think it is either. So that's only because of how Saul Goodman is in Be- uh, Breaking Bad. So I'm assuming it's going to go two ways. Uh, it's not going to go the third way, which is the happy ending. Well, I don't think it's going to be that option. No. I think it's going to go one of two ways. Um, either she dies or she just doesn't cut uh, Jimmy slash Saul off from her life forever. I'm assuming that's what's going to happen, but I don't know. Uh, as a, yeah, because uh, in Breaking Bad, there's like no mention of her like, at all. No. So, no, uh, like, things where he, he looks, like, caught up in it or... From, from my recollection, anyway. I mean, I've, I've only watched Breaking Bad through, like, five times. I'm quite the fan. So. Mm. It, uh, the thing is with Breaking Bad, it it is quite harrowing at times, whereas Best Call Saul just is a lot more fun uh, to watch. Mm. For, so, it, I know... It's cause, like, always up to, like... I, I don't know, a, a bit like always sunny. He's always up to some kind of scheme. Mm. Because I know people who are like, I will never I will never rewatch Breaking Bad. I will never watch it again. And then when I'm like, oh, I'm watching Better Call Saul, it's like, well, oh, great. And it's just like, well, I understand why you feel like that. And you're not wrong in feeling very uh about Breaking Bad. It does get dark. It does get... It is very harrowing, and that opinion is completely fine. Um, I, I know, I know, like I, said, I know quite a few people who feel like that over Breaking Bad, and like definitely like the later seasons when you see Walter doing what he does, it's like this isn't he isn't a good person. You know, we're not following. No, no, nobody's a good person. <laughs> I, he is not a good person. Uh, I'm not saying like. Jimmy slash Saul Goodman is any is a good person either, but it's a lot lighter. I think the fact that we know he's n- he's not trying to, I guess, well maybe he is trying to cheat those he's close to, but it's not. I think because he doesn't have a family, it doesn't feel as harrowing. Maybe. Well, the the, the one family he did have just sort of undermined him at like every turn. Yeah, and, and this made him feel. Like, um, I don't know. Just like, like he, he just wasn't good enough at anything. Even though he was trying hard and he, and he was doing okay for himself, mm. it just wasn't good enough. <laughs> no matter what he did. So, I don't know. It, he seems driven. Like he just wants to prove himself uh, more than anything. And every time he gets shot down again, he's always been put in a situation where. He's trying to do the right thing, but there's no real right way to go about it. It's it's really complex. Like, mm. You can you can see you can kind of understand why he's doing what he's doing. Um, and honestly, like that that's a good hallmark for like how how to write a good villain is if you can see it from their point of view, mm. even though obviously they're still wrong. But you get why they're yeah. yeah, you understand these motivations. Well. You know, when you're all all out drinking and you just talk about Thanos, and everyone's like, you know what, Thanos was right. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's a lot of dickheads out there. <laughs> maybe, maybe the universe would be better off if Thanos snapped his fingers. Who knows? Uh... Yeah, like like in Eternal, was like the, the whole world was a giant egg. Like Thanos did the right egg. thing by like, slowing it down. Egg. <laughs> Thanos did the right thing by slowing it down. It's like, surely. Thanos did nothing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, no, he he did do something wrong, but you know, uh, no, I, I'm I'm looking forward to where this final season of Breaking Bad, uh, not Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul goes, and I think the more I'm, the because I've just binged so much of it, I'm just like, as soon as this finishes, I'm gonna start rewatching Breaking Bad just. Go straight onto it. Uh, I I think it's that time to finally rewatch Breaking Bad for personally. Uh, oh yeah. Although I know something of what's I know of one thing in season six, which 
I'm assuming it's going to be either the final episode or may- maybe a couple before. But I, so they are going to tie the two together. But yeah, well, I kind of have to. It, yeah. It's already like I, I'm fully caught up, so it's already yeah. like taking shape. Yeah. Um, what what I am intrigued to know is at the beginning of every yes. series, there's like a little sort of flash forward to like what Saul Goodman's doing like in the here and now. Yeah. And um, I I'm not sure if like the last episode will be as a sense like the flashback essentially, mm-hmm. which is like the rest of the series. It'll be uh, like, you where, mean the flash forward. Where, yeah, so this one will be like what's happening now, like the last episode is yeah. like caught up to where he's so because season six doesn't start with that either. Like every season starts with a fl- with the I guess a flash forward or the mm-hmm. current timeline or like the events after Breaking Bad. But yeah. season six doesn't start with that. So yes, it does. Hmm? Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. It does. I've watched. <laughs> it doesn't because at the the last yes. time was at the end of uh, season five where he he's about to get get a new name and then he's like. Actually, I'll do it myself, and then we see nothing since. Well, uh, look, you know, let's just let's just see how it pans out. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I, I know it's just like taking place in here and that you don't see him, but um, you do see a lot of people like clearing out his house. And you... Anyway, mm. yeah, it's still good. But please go watch it, everyone. If you haven't. Better Call Saul <laughs> is fantastic. Yeah, it, it's more of a slow burn. You mm. might need to give, like, a, give it a little time of the first few episodes. Okay, I so. think season one might be... It def- Season one definitely was trying to find its footing. It, it definitely struggled to find its footing. But like, once you get to like these later seasons, it it's so easy to watch. And it's so, so enjoyable and so well written. Mm-hmm. I'd say it's more of a slow burn, but it is tonally the same. <laughs> hmm. I think it is a bit lighter, but it is still mostly the same tone. Mm. Lighter apart from the bits where it isn't. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, anyway. Well, since we're still talking series, we, we do have a topic for today. We will get around to it. But I, I just want to quickly discuss this one while I'm thinking about it. Uh, so I... Binge watch the entirety of the series Peacemaker, which, if you don't know, is a character portrayed by John Cena, who was originally in the uh, the newer Suicide Squad. Um, and it takes place after the events of the movie. But uh, without spoilers, um, it's a lot of fun. There's eight episodes of like forty five minutes apiece. It's just a lot of fun. It's really funny. Um, it, he's essentially like um, he is like a super villain, but he just wants peace like, at any means, even if that means killing people. So his moral compass is like all over the place, but there is far less emphasis on that, and it's more like um, him uh, being forced to like join a sort of team to like stop an event happening. And if I explain any more, I will ruin everything. But every character is great. They play off each other really well. Uh, when they're having, but well, even when they're having arguments amongst themselves, they're, um, the the lines they come out with, they throw you off. This is so funny. Hmm. Um, like one one of the characters that uh, people really like, or for my talking with some friends about it, uh, there's a character called um, uh, Vigilante, who. He's he's the guy who like thinks he's like peacemaker's like best friend, like best buddy, but he's kind of annoying. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, um, but he does have like he does have like, the skills to back himself up. <laughs> um, but he, he kind of feels like a how can I put it like a Tesco value version of Deadpool <laughs> <laughs> minus <the> regeneration. <laughs> like if Dep- Deadpool was annoying, and I know people do find him annoying, but like sort of intentionally so. <laughs> Hmm. But, uh, I don't know. Wait, if Deadpool was more of a psychic, but knew he was a psychic, I guess. But uh, yeah, the whole the whole show is only eight series. Um, I don't want to say too much about it, but it is a lot of fun. I had a 
blast. I binge watched the whole thing in like a day and a half. Like, what, I what's just it sat on? There. Uh, it's on the HBO Max. Oh, right. I know. Yeah, I know. Mm. I know. I think that's why a lot of people haven't seen it, <laughs> but everyone I know has seen it. I so still I've yet to see. Just it very highly. I still yet to see the new Suicide Squad, which is something I do really want to watch. Yeah, yeah I've fun. It is fun. Uh, oh, apart from the weird the... starfish, but yeah, I'd, I'd say totally. Um, the, the series kind of carries on like that. Cool. <laughs> it's like. There's some dumb stuff, but it knows it's dumb. It's, again, it's like DC trying to make up for like being really depressing with like the other stuff. So it's just trying to have fun. Hmm. And I've also got to give a special shout out to the uh, the theme song of it because it's so fucking catchy. The opening um, is it, basically just a little dumb dance number, but it's one of those <laughs> things. that's like I'm not skipping this. Don't you dare give me the option to skip this. <laughs> no, hmm. I'm watching it every time. And I'm not really a fan of dance numbers or anything, but it's so upbeat and catchy. And like, I had to download the, uh, the the theme song, and I swear I've had it on repeat for like the last couple of days. Hmm. <laughs> it's just one of those. It's just an earworm, but it's so upbeat. They're like glam, glam rock. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. Please go watch it. Um, I, when I, when I originally said I would watch Suicide Squad, several people were like, oh, "Go watch me, Franker." Just, just do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. Mm-hmm. So I did, and I'm really glad I did. I enjoyed like every second of it. There, there's like no fat to it. It's like every episode is 45 minutes, but everything in there is like pretty essential. Or if, if it's if it's not moving the plot along, then they're just having a laugh. Yeah, mm. I, yeah, it's good. It's very good. Well, we got three more things before we got our topic. Uh, I think first, first thing. Um, I well, brief. I I have seen Doctor Strange too, but I'm gonna wait till Chris has seen it before we uh, talk about it in detail. Uh, yeah, but, we don't want like potential spoilers. Or anything. Um, but uh, Moon Knight finished last oh, no this week. Uh, so as time of recording, Moon Knight finished this week. Um, yep. I know, I think we both have very different views on this as well. As uh, all right. So in a nutshell, uh, if I just do it uh, pretty much by right episode, I thought the first episode was all right. The next three episodes sort of meandered along. The fifth episode was much better, like far more interesting. And then the last episode was a complete letdown, like on every level. <laughs> so yeah. Peacemaker was much, much better. <laughs> it was good to find it going to have to watch it now. Uh, it's possibly the first thing I've watched, like, Marvel-wise, that I've been really disappointed in. Or was it, why was it disappointing? Like, this is coming from someone who's not seen Moon Knight. Uh, let's let Dan have his say first. Okay, okay. Really uh, I, 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 can, I can see where you come from, Chris. Um, for me, like... I guess in terms of episode by episode for me, I, I I enjoyed every episode, but I think the first two episodes just felt like one long pilot, and I feel like they, especially the first episode, confused people more than it should have, and maybe they should have just released both episodes at the same time instead of uh, having a week break because it just would have cleared a lot more things out um i i i the cgi in the first episode was very mm, questionable yeah i i think throughout this series the cgi was very questionable uh to be fair the cgi in dot strange 2 wasn't much better but anyway uh, <laughs> um i i i think when Moon Knight was trying to say something, especially over, I guess, when they go into Mark's backstory. I I think it had a really good footing, and I really liked that side of it. And I think Yeah, that's it like, what I, mean. like, I said, like, the fifth one was probably the best one when they did Oh, that. yeah, maybe the fifth episode was probably the best one. Uh, I, I I really liked what it was trying to do in the, like, the later half of the season. And I think 
I, I definitely think uh, I, I did like the end. Unlike you, I did. I did quite like the end. I think it brought everything full circle. Um, I think maybe the post credit scene was a bit of a maybe a, a letdown in terms of what it did, and I don't know. It 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 felt like it, they just had to shoehorn it in, and it was a bit like, well, you they they um, hinted at that. For the whole season, and then it just felt shoehorned, and also didn't feel. I don't know. It felt a bit weird, but for the most part, I did like. I did really enjoy Moon Knight, and it was nice to see Mark and Stephen uh, come together at the end, and like have them both have their own. They both both personalities felt like their own characters, and they both. It was nice to like. I don't, I don't know. It, it it felt really good seeing them both come to terms with who both of them were inside the, the one body. Um, and it, I I really like Moon Knight's design, both both as Moon Knight and Mister Knight. Yeah, okay, maybe some of the CGI w- did look a bit off, um, but I think for the most part, like the fight. The fight scenes were decent, and I did like, I did enjoy the story. I think compared to some of the other Marvel series, it was probably one of, one of the stronger ones. I still think Hawkeye is the strongest. Oh really? So we really differ on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I like. I think with how as as time goes by, I think some of the earlier. Phase four TV shows are not have got worse, are not as good as I initially thought. I and when I rate, when I think about the MCU and rate those sh- uh, the series and the films, the series get go lo- far go lower down as time goes by, except Hawkeye. Hawkeye is just. Is easily the best. Hawkeye kind of just. I think Hawkeye is probably better than I actually give it credit for. I think I might need to adjust where I put that. Mm. I think I need to rewatch them all again. I. Honestly, like, judgment. Like, I, 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 I did really enjoy WandaVision, but I think now I've seen Doctor Strange 2, I don't know. It. I don't know if. It's better or worse. It's I'm like really confused how I feel about One Division now. Now I'm like, is it better or is it actually got worse? I'm not sure. I know I'm not trying to say much about Doctor Strange two, but mm. that's that's I guess all, as much as I I'm willing to say about Doctor Strange two. I did enjoy Doctor Strange two. That's the only thing I will say about it. But yeah. But yeah, that was how I felt about Moon Knight. Yeah, well, I, again, I thought the CGI was questionable. Um, I just didn't feel as invested as I felt I should have been. Um, and there was one bit near the end that, in the final episode that really ticked me off. It's like the final fight bit. And there's a bit where he just blacks out and he's just like, what? I was like, are you fucking having a laugh? <laughs> Because they did that in the first episode, and I was like, that's fine. It's like building the character. You don't know. He's like just as confused as everyone else. Uh, so it, it works the first time. But he did it during the final fight, and there's no real explanation. So to give it some more context. Um, he's literally like, um, the, the villain's going to win. He's literally like on the ropes. There's like no way. And then it just, he just like blacks out. The, the show just like cuts to black, and then it fades back in again. And Moon Knight's just like just one. He's triumphant, and I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> well, he, he goes into his third personality. That's what happens. Yeah, well, I get that, but this is just like a sort of a get out of jail free card. It's like they can pull this as many times as they want. Well, no, there's only three personalities. There's, there's not. Well, I, I believe there's only three personalities. Yeah, but but all of a sudden it just felt like there were no stakes. It just felt like, oh, we can just pull this out of his ass. <laughs> yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't care for it. <laughs> I, I literally said it. This seems like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that again. 
bear, we do remember I've not read it in the comics. I don't know anything about the character. I know purely what's happened in the series. Mm. Uh, that was, mm. But uh, yeah, it's not as good as Better Call Saul. <laughs> I would say Be- Better Call Saul is far better. Out of all the TV shows I've watched recently, Better Call Saul is the best thing I've watched. Mm-hmm. That's not it. Well, I'm not talking about anime because that's a different thing, but of actual but, TV t- shows. <laughs> but talking of anime, uh, I uh, believe Brandon's watched the series, hasn't he? Yeah. He- yes, I've, I've seen, you know, probably what's dubbed is probably one of the best anime classics. I actually, so to put some context on this, I've been off ill for about a week because I had a cold which turned to a chest infection, so I was stuck at home. So I was like, okay, I'm going to use this time very, very wisely and watch something which I've been meaning to watch for a very, very long time. So I watched all of the TV anime series of Evangelion. And that was one hell of a ride. It really, really was. Like trying to piece together just what the fuck is actually happening and what the fuck the ending means. Well, Took it out of me, so I had to have another day off work. <laughs> have, you, have you seen the other... the? Uh, Death, Rebirth, and uh, End of Evangelion. No, um, I'm planning on watching those some point this week because yeah. obviously I re- returned to work, so I was just you know steadily getting back into things. Yeah. You know, uh, now they, I'm become more. Yeah, they that like End of I think End of Evangelion is like the true end. Yeah, you may have heard a section of End of Evangelion though. Um, what do you mean? Just before you actually go into Neon Genesis, have you? Um, you know Parkway Drive. Yeah, of <laughs> ha- course. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you listened to uh their first release before Killing with a Smile? Uh, Don't Close Your Eyes. That album. I've heard bits of it. I can't really remember off the top of my head the tracks on there, but I've definitely heard it. Okay. Well, when I. Before I got into anime like I did, um, I was as, but I was obviously into my music, and I listened to "Don't Close Your Eyes," uh, that album that is meant to be like two EPs for Partway Drive meshed into one, and um, the fir- the intro track is called "Dot Dot Dot," and then I watched Evangelion, and then it got to a moment in even end of Evangelion, and then I was like. I've heard this before. Wait, I know this. And <laughs> dot 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 is a, is an extract from End of Evangelion. Really? Yeah. It's uh As- Asuka. Oh, okay. <laughs> so no, okay. You have to remind me when I when I actually get around to watching the films, just tell me to listen out for it. Yeah. And then I'll go back and listen to it on yeah. Spotify just to just to clarify, yeah. yeah, I had a good time watching Evangelion. I think, I think this year, I think I've watched more mecha anime this year than I have ever. So, like, I watched um, Darling in the Franks. I've now watched Evangelion. Eighty six. Yeah, I've seen eighty six. You know, I've seen Com- oh, Comet Lucifer was ages ago. Yeah, it was but right. It, I'm almost reaching the double digits of mecha anime and i'm very very happy i have next two you need to watch are gridman and dizemon just so that when the film gridman x dizemon film comes out you we can go see it together and when is the film coming out no idea maybe next year <laughs> okay so i've plenty of time to watch them. oh yeah but i want you yeah, to watch I... them by the time that film comes out okay I'll, I'll try to make sure i do yeah. But yeah, overall, I had a really, really good time watching Evangelion. I didn't expect... I mean, I, I had a sort of rough idea it was going to be dark. And then finding out, you know, what exactly the Evangelions are, the Evas are. I sort of had a rough idea of what they were going to be. Because I sort of had that idea... Well, I can tell Darling in the Franks is heavily influenced by Evangelion, basically. Because just the same... how The way the mechas are, the whole story... But Obviously, it's, a, it's an older anime, decent. and I've really got to respect the older anime, you know, pushing the boundaries for a really complex story as what Evangelion actually has. It's much more of a psychological anime than it is a mecha, really. Yeah. Uh, just purely because at the end, you just got the circle jerk of everyone going, congratulations, congratulations, well done. 
That was just so weird, like the like that ending. I can see why so many people were confused about it. Well, that's not when you watch End of Evangelion. That yeah, is yeah, kind I'm... of what's classed as the true ending of the yeah, so series. I, I look forward Which to getting very, to those. Very different. Four. Very I, different. I hope so because part of me felt slightly dissatisfied with the fact that okay, we have beaten all the angels. Now oh. what? It's just the last two episodes are just. I remember. You know, Finishing coming, coming out basically. I remember finishing End of Evangelion and just you know, bit. I think I said to myself, "What? Wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? that that's the, wait, what? So How long I, ago did you watch it? Like, uh, I'd, I'd, over ten, like maybe ten years ago. I don't, I don't really. Know. I don't know. Maybe it it, it must have been around that. Um, I keep meaning to rewatch uh, Evangelion. I'm a bit skeptical with. The, ver- right, the version you've watched was the one on Netflix, and I'm a bit skeptical with that. Uh, so I'm I'm debating maybe not watching that version, but I don't know. It's the convenience. It felt it that's felt the, fine to me. It really. I didn't I didn't feel any problems with it. Okay, actually, here's a question: What did you what what did you, you watched it in the sub, didn't you? Yeah, of course I did. Yeah, that's what I, I'm I ain't, also. I ain't, tarn- I ain't tarnishing my eyes. Well, that that's the thing. It's got a very beloved dub. That's one of the reasons why I'm very, I, I um, uh, the dub is very, the original dub is very, uh, loved, beloved. I don't see myself wanting to rewatch it in dub though, mm. because it it was it's already twenty six ep- well what twenty six episodes as is. So I'm just like, that's a lot of time to commit just to having to rewatch something just so I can witness the dub. But then having to compare and contrast the Netflix dub to the original dub as well. So that's 52 episodes I've got to get through. Oh shit, I just remembered. I've also seen Code Geass this year as well. <laughs> yeah, just a random, just a random off topic. Yeah, that's another mecha I've seen. Mm. And then the other thing which I've watched, so going off at a slight tangent, so I've seen Evangelion, but the other thing which I've seen as well this week is I binge watched season two of B Stars. I do honestly, I, I sort of at the start, I was sort of. So for those of you who don't know, B Stars starts off as a nice rom com mystery. At the start, you know one of the school kids, one of the school kids have been murdered or devoured, and then Legacy's, you know, Whoa. going around the drama club, meeting up with Hal. But I do like how in second season it turns, it goes more into the actual murder mystery side of it. Mm. But I do have a couple of gripes with it, which I'm hoping do get answered if there is a season three. Because personally, I don't feel complete with how season two ended. I don't know if you feel the same, Dan. Mm. Uh, in terms of what? Like, why introduce us to the security guard Snake, then not to mention her for like eight episodes? Like, why introduce his character to tell Legacy to go find the you know the culprit who devoured Tem, but, and then for Legacy to not report back to to the security guard that he's found the devourer? Well, maybe that or maybe that happens in season three. I, I don't know. If they I know, do this is what I mean. I'm hoping that we get season three, three because the the principal was also told whoever finds the murderer of Tem has to become the beast star. So well, again, is that yes? Yeah, so that's what I was told. Like. The principal's told, we need to elect a B-star. You choose the person who... If you get a student who finds out who devoured Tem, you elect them to be the B-star. But that's not happened yet. So we don't know if Legacy's the B-star. We don't know if Ruby's going to be the B-star. We don't know if Lucy, or not Lucy, but Juno or Hal are going to be the B-star. So it's like, come on. Like, There's just a few things which just still seemed unanswered in season two. Mm. But overall, I liked the mystery of it. I, I was thinking, okay, who could it possibly be? My first instinct was thinking, right, the principal seeming a bit off for, you know, wanting to actually answer who murdered Tim. So at first I was like, is it the principal who did it? But then obviously as it went on, I sort of guessed, okay, it, you know, it's it's him. Yeah, well, I'm not going to spoil who it is, just in case there are people who haven't seen it. But yeah, overall, I did enjoy it. I, I did really, really enjoy Beastars. I think it but, makes me want to maybe rewatch the first season and see the interactions with said character and honestly it really really did because i because i wanted to find out like were any hints dropped in season one for who it was or was it or just the the way he behaved like is it 
pointing it out or anything, but no, nah, it, it, yeah, I was, I was shocked, but not shocked because I could sort of expect it because, you know, he's a big motherfucker. So you would think it was, but I really like that scene, you know, in the corridor by the nurse's office where he really like sort of goes alpha on legacy. I thought that was like, I thought that was mm. really, really, really cool scene. Mm. But yeah. So if anyone's not seen it and if, if, you know, if, even though CGI and anime is not really well respected or anything, but the CGI across all of these stars and the animation is fucking amazing. Do go watch it. I personally still think season one is better. I don't know how you feel. Yeah, I probably think season one is better because it seems more wholesome, but I liked the more darker undertone of season two. Mm. I, I, it felt a bit off with Ruri wanting to go join the... The Maf- Shishigumi, yeah. the, basically the Mafia. The, the Lion Mafia. The yeah, mafia and then lions. Legashi wanted to train under a panda for, to train his meat powers. But, it, yeah, it seems a bit off, but, I mean, it's sort of a well-rounded story, I'd say. It was a, it was a very, very pleasant watch. Mm. Good for a season one opening, though. Season one opening is OP. Oh, yeah, that, 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 that opening. Is such a good op- opening. That, that, that opening is amazing and just the animation of that opening is amazing I think stop we, motion is fucking incredible we, yeah we've, we've we, spoke about it before on the podcast I, I, we've just been like if, it doesn't matter if you're a fan of anime or not that opening is just worth your attention it's amazing definitely uh, definitely definitely you gotta compare it to Peacemakers I've nah, well, not I've, seen I've, it so I don't I was gonna I, say I'm, still, I'm gonna remain biased here Beastars season 1 opening is OP uh, it is. It's like I've been like thinking of like doing like a, a top twenty openings, and I think that there's a few where where I'm like they're just there. There's no question, they're just there. And I think Ooh. I think Beast of season one is just there. Okay, Dan. Yeah, actually, you know what? I will challenge you. Should we do like a openings versus each other and see what each of us would dub as our favorite anime openings? Well, maybe if you want, maybe a future special. I don't know, whatever we want to do. Yeah, I'll, I'll challenge you to that because I, I reckon, obviously, some of us, some of it will be shared because you know yeah. some of them are just op. But it'll be interesting to see what you would actually consider your favorites. Like some, some are like classic. I think it's more, it's a bit of everything. It's not just the music; it's the animation that goes with. Yeah, the it. animation as well. Yeah, like there's uh, ones where it's like this song is amazing, but then the anime opening is just whatever. Yeah, like it's just passable. It's not bad, but it's just passable. Like there's a few Naruto ones that I love the songs, but the animation of the opening is just it's good, but it's compared to other ones, it's like no. Yeah, one hundred percent agree. Um, but I guess enough anime talk. Uh, for, for one day we will actually get onto our our topic. Uh, for today. Um, may, this is, I mainly brought made mentioned this topic because I've not really played many games recently. Uh, well, when I say not played many games, many new games. Uh, although I've got a few lined up, um, but our topic that I mentioned uh, to the boys is favorite cutscenes. Uh, I just before we start recording, I did say not ending cutscenes because normally ending cutscenes are t- pretty good. So I think it would be a bit of a, a bit ch- uh, cheap if we just said, oh, this ending cutscene of the said game is our favourite. But maybe cutscenes in games where it's like, oh, I, I want to rewatch that cutscene. Oh, I remember that cutscene. That it had this moment in it was really good, or the animation, or whatever. Like that's what I I've, I I I kind of meant. So. Um, I've got a few, but I think maybe one of you two should. I would say start. I've got one which I sort of have to mention, even if it's like an honourable mention. But I think all of us will probably agree on this. Mm-hmm. What would you say is the most iconic cutscene from Dark Souls One? I I, I I was like, someone's going to mention Soulsborne. I was like, yeah, I'm going to say the gaping dragon. Oh, I think that, that is was a the good... moment. Yeah, I think that was the moment where I was like. Because I've seen his little head poke up over the waterfall. You're like, ah, oh, it's like a some sort of little little snake thing. And it comes off. Okay. Okay, we're fighting a dragon. Okay, bring it. Bring it. Oh, my God, it's a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you could also say like the uh, Ornstein and Smoke one's really cool where it's just like they both come down you're like oh yeah I mean it's cool but it doesn't but I wouldn't say it sort of felt impactful or like a sort of what the fuck whereas the Gaping Dragon I think it did like just seeing just all those teeth underneath and it was just like wow Mm. See, I mean, it's very, very small and brief. It doesn't really impact anything, but just seeing actually, it visually. You know, I if we're actually talking about Dark Souls 1, I know what it is. It's Altorius by, by a mile. Or Sif, one of those two. Mm. Or uh, if we could say that, Sif after you've done the DLC. Yes. It, yeah. I would say Sif after the DLC or just Altorius. I think, yeah, there you go. That's what I would say. I, I might be biased, but if if we're talking like any bit from any of the Dark Souls games, I'd probably just because he's my favourite boss, just a little intro bit before the Abyss watches fight you. Oh so like yeah, you, that's so cool. When, oh, when the fight, you know, God, Souls, and then yes. and the camera just points it like just pointing at you. It's like oh shit. <laughs> oh here we go. <laughs> fuck, I love there's, that. There's so off. Oh, fuck said we're gonna sound like right little simps for this, but loads of the boss cutscenes from Soulsborne are just so good. These aren't my picks. I haven't even picked. I didn't. I. I didn't. I haven't picked any of the Soulsborne. Uh, just because Heretic. I was like, oh, I didn't want. I knew one of you two would, so I was like, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I don't really need. Feel I need to. So, but what? Like, so what? You would say the Gaping Dragon. I'd say from Dark Souls One. <laughs> hmm. Gaping Gaping Dragon is my favorite overall. Just like it's the most memorable. Mm. I do yeah, like I of that. It, as, as disappointing as the boss is, I do like the little uh, intro cinematic to Nashandra at the end of Dark Souls 2. Like, chosen oh, and yeah. you've, proved, you've proved yourself worthy to me. Now be one with the door. Oh, that that isn't that. that yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's been pretty good. Probably because I've, I've replayed it again. And I'm playing it again tomorrow. <laughs> a stupid amount of time. <laughs> um, well, I, I've I'm gonna pick my first one, um, uh, and this is from my favorite game, um, Final Fantasy Nine, and it's I'm actually funny enough I'm actually getting this as a a picture for my wall. Uh, hope hopefully next month it's on the way. Uh, coming from America, <laughs> but um, I'm actually getting this cutscene on my wall, and it is Bahamut versus Alexander from Final Fantasy IX. Yeah, that's a pretty cool moment. Do you remember you that much... one? I uh, do, Brandon. Yeah, I do. Yeah, you know I, what my uh, favorite bit of Final Fantasy IX is. I know it's really weird, but I I really resonate with it. And um, and that's just the bit where you fight Black Bolts free for the second oh, time. Where he's on his amazing. last legs. Oh. And he's like it, it's still you still feel the tension where he's like especially on his last legs. It's like he knows he can't do it, but he's still trying anyway. That that is <laughs> such a good moment. I really like that bit. I don't know why that's my favourite bit, it just is. Just really like Oh that. wait, on his last moments. <laughs> oh yeah, that I thought you meant the Yeah. No, that is good. But I, I think the cutscene uh, where you first fight Black Waltz Three is so good, and you just kind yeah, of can good. see the the pain in Vivi's eyes, and you're like, oh. There's like the bit where you like falls over, and then the Garnet's like trying to help him. You're like, oh no, Vivi. Oh. Uh, you know, as as soon as you mentioned cutscenes, I thought well, somebody's going to mention Final Fantasy. There's no way, not one of the games. In the yeah, game. this motherfucker here. Yeah, you know, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I was gonna the, say, like, if if people think of cutscenes, I think everyone thinks of that cutscene from FF Seven. All right, whatever. Yeah. I, like, 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 yeah, okay, that is impactful. I'm not, I like, I'm not trying to like shit on oh, on it, but it's it's like, it's iconic. But is, is it the best? It's not the best. Though. It's uh, iconic, yeah. Not the best. Um, I guess. What about you, Chris? See, I had a really hard time with this one because I'm the kind of guy who will like watch a cutscene once and then skip it. Or if I'm not invested in the story all that much, I would can skip a cutscene anyway yeah. just because I want to get on with. It. I just want to get on with it. So, um, so honestly, cutscenes wise, I'm nothing stands out 
that massively. I, I've had a hard think about this, though. So I, I suppose for a first one. Now, originally, I was going to go with like the intro to uh, The Last of Us. Mm. Um, but I, I, I don't know if that really classifies as a cutscene, because you kind of play through it. So does that count? You mean, I know which bit you're talking about, the bit where yeah. she gets it's like the killed. Whole intro bit, yeah. yeah. But... Um, no, I think on reflection, if I was just going to pick a cutscene and just a cutscene, I'd probably go with from the second game. Just the bit where, and it's, I believe it's completely missable. It's it's where um, Ellie just like finds a guitar and starts playing "Take on Me," mm. uh, but she does the whole thing, and um, I, I think graphically it's just impressive because if you look at her hands, she's playing it properly on the guitar. It's yeah. like no, 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 it's it's not like half assed or anything. It's mm. done really well. So, you know what? If anyone says, like, all oh, video games aren't art, just show them that. So that's fucking amazing. <laughs> mm. but, yes, um, that's, that's one that really stands out to me. Anyway, for the first one. I, I, I haven't got much more to say about it. I just think it's really neat. <laughs> yeah, I've yet to play Last of Us 2. I know we spoke... I think I know you spoke about it on the podcast, I think. I yeah, you... it's, a good game. it's a good game, but I think it has those as well. I think, oddly enough, it's a game that's too long. Mm. Brandon? I've been thinking about this. I've, I like, it, like Chris, I've been struggling as well because there, obviously there are so many cutscenes out there, but trying to remember every cutscene from every game I've played is a fucking job. Yeah, it's a I've lot. Probably, I have to probably do some sort of recency bias with this. Mm. Oh, wait, no. Oh, shit, I can't use it because technically it's the end cutscene. I was yeah. gonna say it's the end, the end scene from Halo Reach, <laughs> because that one that was very, very harrowing. Well, it's not. Yeah, it is very, very. It's not, actually, no, it's not a cutscene, is it? Fuck it, no, it's not, because you actually play the cutscene. Um. Oh fuck me! I have to really have a think about this. Well, I can jump straight to another one where you want to think. Yeah, please. So, um, this might seem a bit weird because of the kind of franchise it is. But I was thinking, you know, Gears of War 3, the bit where Dom sacrifices himself. Um, no, because I've not oh, played Gears of War. But... Um, oh. and, and Mad World starts playing, and it's really sad. <laughs> I was, uh, To be fair, I was actually going to mention either Gears of War 2 or Gears of War 3 as a cutscene. Yeah, it just yeah. seems weird for the type of series it is. It's like, that's a really emotional moment. It's yeah, like, because I was even going to choose between... Pink- What's he doing in my big, big manly gun game? <laughs> yeah, I was going to choose either between Gears of War Two with Ty, or Gears of War Three with Dom, mm. or even yeah, Gears of War Two with Dom. You know when he sees Maria. Mm, that one's all right, but we didn't really know Maria all that much. <laughs> nah. So but I think you can sort of have. A rough, I reckon if there was more sort of relationship building and you get to the point where you see Dom meets Maria, mm. it probably would have been more impactful. But I think yeah, because of the fact that you would have gone through Gears One, Two, and Three with you know, dom yeah especially if you're like player two you've been playing as dom and you just die. yeah like, the fuck <laughs> well player two you've now got players bad yeah. <laughs> i know it, it that one caught me more by surprise than a lot of people i a lot of cutscenes like it's like you can't kill player two he's part of the game what are you doing i, did, I honestly i think some of the little so, little cutscenes from gears have been quite nice like you know gears of war 2 with the Brumac going going crazy, with the Leviathan, the introduction mm. of the corpses, like those moments when you get introduced to the new enemies in Gears in the whole Gears of War to, Gears of War series, I think they're, they're all quite nice. They're not they don't they're not overly long, they don't overstay their bulk, it's just a quick here you go, what the fuck, now deal with it. Yep. I've uh, just thought of another one, uh, another one for me. But I, I think I have mentioned this on the podcast before. Uh, I can't remember when I mentioned this many, many moons ago. But I think I, I this is something I have to kind of. If there's any cutscene, this is is the cutscene I should mention for me as a as a as the gamer I am is the first cutscene I ever cried at, and that is from. Wind Waker, when you first leave your outset island and you're waving, Link's waving to his grandma. 
that was <laughs> the first moment I ever cried at a video game, and I I still remember that day. I was back at my uh, the my uh, the previous family house, and I was playing it, and I remember crying, and I was like, "Why am I why am I crying at a video game? Like, why not? What? Yeah, now I'm like, why 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 not? I I've, I've cried at numerous video games since, but it was the first time, and I was like, "Why am I crying at this? What? Why am I why am I doing this?" But now I, I every time I get to it, I I I never I don't cry at it anymore. But I will always remember that first time I cried at that moment, and it for me that if there's a, if there is a, a cutscene I have to mention, it has to be that. For me, uh, for me as a person, that is one of the that is the cutscene I have to mention. I'm really having to wrap my brains now, trying to think. Because ever since, because ever since you mentioned it in the group chat about the cutscenes, I was like, right, whatever I play, I'm going to watch all the cutscenes, and then nothing really sort of came to mind. But I, I reckon if you ask me this question, like. Again, I'll probably be able to think of more. Mm. But I'm really having to think. Well, how I I say my other one, and I, ooh, I, ooh, I I've just thought of one. Okay. Uh, again, I'm not sure if it's just biased because I I adore this game, but I love any sort of cutscene which involves CJ Ryder and Big Smoke in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I'm sorry, but I I just adore their interactions of you know. CJ getting thrown off the car and going, ah, oh, shit, here we go again. Like, mm. that's that's amazing. When they go to the drive-thru and Big Smoke starts ordering a shitload of food, that's amazing. Mm. You know, I, I I really just... I'm not sure if it's just, again, bias because it's the gate... Of all the Grand Theft Auto games, it's the one I grew up with. But I just loved San Andreas, like, anything about San Andreas. Even now, like, all the, all the nuances in it, all the just the subtleties in it, I do adore them. So, yeah. CJ's cutscenes in San Andreas, I, I have to give a, a shout out to. Well, the other one that I have is <laughs> here we go. Uh, Fire and Free Houses, and technically this is two in one. So I know when I spoke about Free Houses last year, I I remember I mentioned that there's four playthroughs, and the moment for two of the playthroughs, which are technically on the same playthrough, uh, you get to a point and then it deviates off. This moment where it deviates, it's that moment. But for not for that, not for those two playthroughs, uh, but for the other two playthroughs, and. So like one was the first when I first played it, and um, I'm, I'm going into I'm going to go into full spoilers here. So if you if anyone actually cares about free houses, don't listen. But um, there it there there's a mass character, and you have to fight this mass character. Um, it's like the fire. It's the penultimate mission before. Uh, in the first half of the game. And at the end, said character reveals, the mass character reveals who they were. And when it got to it, I was like, wait, what? It's this character? And I had to put the game down. And just I was just walking around the house, just like, N- oh my gosh, I can't believe it's this character. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then the last, the third time I, uh, I did, when I did the third playthrough, I got to that same moment, and it had a very... It was completely different. It had... Um, it had... The, the Lord character was just like, I'm going to murder you. And I was like, oh, shit! Oh, my <laughs> gosh! This is amazing! Oh, my gosh! And it, it's... Although it's two cutscenes, it's like... It's like so different on how they went down, and it, uh, it's. I, I I still remember the the on my third playthrough that cutscene. I've I I I've rewatched that cutscene so many times because it's 
just so hype of where this character goes in the second half of the game and why I've, I've said this before why my the third playthrough I did of Free Houses might be my favourite maybe uh, or it, I think it has the best character arc or the, uh, of any character uh, and th that's one of those moments because it just unleashed the floodgates of where this game was going to take this character and I was just so on board for it. <laughs> but yeah, there's three for me. Uh, what else have you guys got? Are you managed to think of any more, Chris? Yeah, actually, I've got a bit of a wild card entry. Because um, I suppose it's always fucking mean it's got them, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. And there's nothing well, wrong with um, that. Well, I was thinking, like, what? When I. When I think of a cutscene in games, my brain immediately jumps to the more dumb ones for the wrong reasons, mm. and I'm thinking, I'm thinking like terrible voice acting. So my <laughs> brain, my brain jumps to like the like Castlevania, like what is our man? <laughs> that that one. Um, uh, but I think if I have to go with another one like that, it's just got to be every single cutscene in the original Resident Evil, <laughs> Fe uh, featuring Barry Burton. Everyone with Barry Burton. Jill sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. I hope this is not Chris's blood. I'll be examining this. How are you examining it, Barry? You just got bare hands. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, you think we can see tyrants now? It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, just just every cutscene from Resident Evil 1. Fuck it. I, I suppose the intro cinematic is pretty fucking good, though. Mm. It's all in black and white. Where they're all like... These dollar store actors like doing a shoot, and then they're getting chased by dogs into the mansion. And don't open that door. Uh, <laughs> you know, just me saying it, it immediately put that scene to your head. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I suppose I'm just gonna have to roll with that. So, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> egg, egg. <laughs> Anyone got any yeah, I, I think I'm completely f fallen flat. I'm really trying to rack my brains for other ones. Like I've got ones, but it's like I think the more I think about it, the more I'm like, oh, that's an ending one. So I don't want to say that. Uh, yeah, but I think that's literally where I've fallen flat. It's just yeah. a lot of the times it's ending. Or right. I've mentioned a Dark Souls one, so I can't really mention other Dark Souls ones because there's hundreds. Uh, I suppose one quick mention. I know technically it's, it is an ending one. But it's a DLC one. It's not the main game. But you mentioned like Dan, like you cried at a cutscene, and yes. I, I have, I have cried at one, only one cutscene if I ever cried at, and it's the ending to um, the Borderlands Two, uh, Tiny Tigers Assault and Dragon. Oh yeah. But when she yeah. like comes to terms with Rowan and Steph, I'm like, yeah, oh, I feel sad. <laughs> I was going to mention <laughs> that as well. Yeah. It... I forgot about that. Yeah. I couldn't not mention it. I, I was, <laughs> that made me feel things. I was debating mentioning that myself. Yeah, but I suppose I suppose if I had to pick like a main one from Borderlands Two, probably the, again the uh, not, not again I'm not talking about it, uh, where, where Hampson Jack like gets Roland. But, yeah, uh, it, for me it's not just that cutscene. It's like all the events that happen afterwards, like mm. in order to try and trying try to cope. It's like the shit storm that happens afterwards. So yeah, it's, it's it's like surpasses a cutscene. It's like, what the fuck? Hmm. <laughs> what has happened? Everyone's like reading from it. Like everyone's like depressed, and then there's even like a, a side quest to like tell everyone that he's there. It's like, uh, uh, yeah, that's a fuck me. Borderlands Two is great. Isn't it? Oh, it's still the best Borderlands game. Yeah. What the hell is the film coming in? <laughs> no idea. Maybe next year, from the looks of it. I can't say. What, I'm is that actually sure. announced as a film coming for Waterlands? Yeah. Yeah, they had the casting code, but I looked at the cast and thought, like, well, I missed the mark on every single character there. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I think the only one that comes anywhere close is like Jack Black as Claptrap. <laughs> but even that, it's like, oh, what's wrong with the voice actors in the game? <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Egg. <laughs> You know when you were talking about um, 
uh, Nobody Saves the World. And I was looking yeah. at uh, screenshots. Uh, <laughs> there was there was a upgrade for whatever it, upgrade tr- whatever the upgrade tree is. One of them was egg. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that that'd be a massive mini egg. The egg's got one of the best skills. <laughs> The, the egg's got a sort of a skill you can highlight. You, you can basically just like drain your mana to gain your health. But you can swap that into other characters. That's one of the better skills there is. Oh, there you go. That, don't, don't be dissing egg now. You know, it's still after 20 episodes, we're still saying egg. Egg. <laughs> well, There's no real punchline to it, is there? It's just egg. Just egg. egg. There you go. Egg. Oh Is it, I um, guess that's it for cutscenes, or I'll tell you yeah, what. Just, I can't just, think of any. Well, ju- just as a just as a closing off, um, I've got a list here of like the ten most iconic cutscenes. Shall I just list them out to you? Yeah. I think before this recording, I think I've read through about a hundred of those, and I couldn't get an answer. Well, I've, I've just got like a sort of top ten, but this is like the general consensus of what the best cutscenes are. So, and I believe you mentioned one already. Um, so, number 10 is Big Smoke's Order from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Which I've never played, I don't know. Uh, number 9 is Taboo Emerges and Snoofer Smash Brothers Brawl. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. Fair yeah, enough. No, that, that, that seems random. I, it? Yeah, I don't know. I, no. I don't I actually think about that. There's quite a few good cutscenes in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Yeah, there are quite a few. The, yeah, there are the, quite a few good cutscenes in the, that game. All right, yeah. Special mention as we're on about Smash Bros. Um, the bit where, like, they, this character is from the same game where Taboo like spreads his wings. He's about to like decimate every single Nintendo character, and then just out the blue, uh, the blue blur, Sonic just jumps in, smashes his wings up, turns to the camera, and does the little finger wagging thing. It's like, that's fucking great. I'll tell you what my favourite <laughs> cutscene is from Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and that's the bit where they're all going into the subspace, and they're all on their uh, little aircrafts. So you've got like the R-Wing, you've got Kirby on his warp star, oh. and that, and you've got like the Great Fox and all that. That is my favourite cutscene from that game. Yeah, that's pretty good. you got the Halberd as well. Yeah, that's a, mate, that's a great cutscene. Okay, so number eight is The Adventure Begins from Ocarina of Time. So I just like the intro. You can see that? Yeah. 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 Uh, number seven, Psycho Mantis Freeze Your Mind. I was, this was on the tip of my tongue as well. Uh, well at least a Metal Gear one was on the tip of my if it, tongue. If, it, if, we, if we go with talking about Metal Gear cuts, we're, we're going to need an entire different series. I know, I know. <laughs> Never mind I, an episode. We, I just, we need its own you just have like Snake Eater where you have um, Revolver Ocelot like do anything with his guns. There you go. Mm. Uh, number six is the reveal of Pyramid Head from Silent Hill 2. Yeah, that's you know pretty what? good. Yeah. Uh, number five is the Sinister Six from uh, the latest Spider-Man. Not yeah. the not the Miles one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, number four is Yuna Sending Souls from Final Fantasy X, which yeah. is like Dancing on the Water. Yeah, that's pretty I mean, good. It, it, it looks pretty, but. Yeah. Because that's great. <laughs> uh, number three, or oh, one I've sort of mentioned, uh, the beginning of the outbreak from The Last of Us. Mm. That's it. Let me guess, number one is Final Fantasy VII. No. Is that number two? Number two. Number two. <laughs> oh. Is that scene from FS. Right. So what's number uh, one? Number one, surprisingly, but I kind of see where it's coming, coming from, is from Resident Evil. It's the reveal of the first zombie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, because that's pretty totally like, jarring. Because hmm. right? it's like the first time you see a zombie and yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll go be honest. That scene never really did much for me. That one didn't freak me out or anything. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd, I'd say the opening's more iconic. Oh, well. It is what it is. Well. And yet, yeah, that, that's number one, apparently. Oh, well, you know. It's all perspective, all opinion at the end of the day. Yep. 
So according to the internet, we're all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Objectively, we're wrong. But fuck it, I like being wrong. <laughs> I may be wrong about that. Mm. Well. Yeah, there we go. Boys, we that's episode 26. Badoosh. Bloody hell. And you know what that means? That next episode, it's been a year. You yeah. heard that right. Next episode will have been one year. I'm sorry, but when you said it's been a year, the first thing that came to mind was just Al Murray. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's the first thing that comes to mind. It's been a year. <laughs> well, it would have, we would have uh, been doing this podcast for a year, next episode. Yes, so. and we do have a plan for it. Uh, it might be slightly different to how we normally do an episode, but I think it's going to be worthwhile. Mm. It's pretty much going to take up the entire show. We might mention one or two little bits here and there, but I think it's going to be heavily focused on one topic. Yeah. But you'll have to wait and see what mm. that is. It's like when this comes out, I will be in a different country when this episode drops. I will be in a different country. But don't worry, I it will still be coming out on a day, and I, all the social media will be fine. It might just be either early or later. Who knows? You know, I think the most impressive thing is not the fact that we've been doing it for years, it's more the fact we haven't missed a single upload date. <laughs> no. We nearly did when I, when I had COVID. We did get close. But we didn't. We have been but close, we but we didn't. We but found it, a way. We always find a way. But um, you never know, in our next second year, there might be some different things going on. Who knows? Yeah, we've got plenty more time to fuck up. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But, as always, it's been as boys, the three amigos, the three fuck-ups, I don't know. <laughs> three eggs. <laughs> the three, the three, three eggs. musketeers. The, uh, oh, what's it? The tres miserables? Oh, I can't. Tres miserables. You know what? I th- I think Chris knows what I'm trying to reference there. Maybe Probably. Metal Gear. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, Lee, I'm fun, terribly. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, so hold on, if, hold on. So which one of us is which? Okay. Which one's solid? Which one's liquid? And which one's the other one? Solidus. I don't know. <laughs> no I idea. Suppose- I suppose, given the state of my stomach, I'll be liquid. <laughs> I, I literally have no idea. I've got no idea what you guys are even on about. You've not even played Metal Gear, have you, Brandon? Nope. Yeah, there I'm you go. perfectly innocent. There you go. Well, you don't really, you don't really play Metal Gear. <laughs> you just watch it. <laughs> All of Metal Gear is just one long cutscene. Yeah, pretty much. So I suppose by default, Metal Gear. Is battle yeah, Metal cuts, Gear is, because, is the best cutscene. That's all it is. Oh, all of them is like, oh, the next, the new film is out. What do you mean, game? Nope. Uh, well, I guess um, that does it for uh, episode twenty-six, and uh, you'll hear from us soon. But until then, you've got all our social media to follow, find many updates when some of us can be asked to update it, like myself, because I'm, I forget sometimes. Um, you can find where whatever Chris is doing on Twitch. Brandon, you will eventually be doing Twitch again. I am returned to streaming as of recording. Oh, now that the PC go. is now up and running. Boom. Uh, so you'll be able to find definitely both of them on Twitch soon, or again as always. And our links for our social media will. As, as, as always, is always in the episode description. So, yeah. All be safe, and you shall hear from us soon. Yeah. Here we go, my brothers. That sounds, that sounds slightly threatening. <laughs> you hear from us. <laughs> well, it's better than see you soon. It's like, hear from us soon. Oh, I will literally just, see you soon. I will be I'm there. Gonna go, I'm going to go for every single person that's listened to this podcast and call them up out of the Bye. 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 <laughs>